we are excited that the plane will be taking off to El Salvador any minute here. And uh, we are glad that you could come and be with us. So welcome, welcome. We're, we're interrupting some people's dinner time, I know. So thank you for setting that aside and joining us. And so it is good to see you. This is, um, this is an exciting team. You guys will be blessed to be here and, and get, get to know them some. Got a few more coming. That's great to have you. Uh, do know that when you get the link afterwards um, that you are not only welcome, but encouraged to send it to friends and share it with them um, so that they too can watch what they missed tonight. So we'd be glad for you to do that. So let's go ahead. Let's go to El Salvador. Um, this is uh, the last two visits that we've taken were a couple of our newest territories. El Salvador is one of our oldest territories. We've been there for quite a number of years, but I'm, I'll let them tell you about that. But um, El Salvador is an exciting place just, just straight south of us and uh, a, a a great growing, one of our mo most quickly growing networks of leaders. It's one of our sending agencies. They are sending trainers out of El Salvador to the neighboring countries, to quite a few places where we could not go as Americans. So we have yes. brothers and sisters who are able to go. Uh, they tell us that we, we might stick out in those countries, but that they can go in and be just fine. So let's go ahead and open in prayer and uh, then give them uh, the floor here. So uh, welcome, Holy Spirit. We welcome you into this time, into our lives, into our hearts. Amen. I have the distinct privilege of introducing to you one of our vice presidents. I mentioned before that over half of our staff now lives outside of the United States. One of our vice presidents is uh, here with us. She's over all of Latin America, uh, which is what, as I said, one of our most quickly growing connections. She thinks she's over the world because she knows people in every country, but um, our, our um, sister's sister was the one who helped us start in El Salvador. And then along the way, we got to meet Carolina. And Carolina is our Latin American vice president. So Carolina, introduce your team. Tell us about all the great things happening there. Thank you, Gordon. El Salvador is the smallest country in Latin America, torn by civil wars, gang members' activities, political unrest, and natural disasters and poverty. Despite all of this, the Bible in Romans 5.20, God tells us that he has poured grace and abundantly favor over us. He's a hard program has been here in El Salvador for over 17 years, as Gordon said. And we're expanding, we have expanded to nearly every corner of this country. Ileana Valenzuela, as a national uh, director, has been uh, working every single weekend from uh, each, each month, from February throughout October, with a team of 30 members. Now I would like to introduce Tirsa Palacios, that will talk to you about how El Salvador's mission trip to around Latin America. Thank you, Caro. Hey, this is Tirsa, I'm from El Salvador as well. And well, I've been with Kids a Heart for about five years now. Uh, part of El Salvador's team has been um, going through mission trip, uh, trips now in Latin America. We have also leaders in Honduras um, where Ile, Caro, and Nadi have participated. We also have Nicaragua with Memo, Costa Rica mm -hmm. also, right? Um, and well, this year was my privilege to be in Panama City in a mission trip. That was wonderful. Um, we met people, beautiful people, not only for torches, local torches, but also we had uh, the opportunity, thanks God and Kids to Heart support, uh, Kids to Heart International support. Um, we met the Secretary of Education in Panama City, who invited us to make, invited, invited us to make alliances 
with the president also, also so we can get um, through the schools, not only tor torches, but in schools. Um, and that's going to be a great impact in Panama, right, with kids next year, Lord will. So by doing this, Kids Are Hard is reaching more people, more kids uh, to transform their lives through the Holy Spirit's guidance, right? Mm -hmm. So now we have Belen. She's going to talk about the Holy, oh, I'm sorry. So now uh, Ileana Valenzuela um, as a national director. Gracias, Dirsa. Hola a todos. Hey, Dirsa. Hello, Hi. everybody. Soy Ileana. I'm Ileana. Mi fabulosa traductora. My fabulous translator. Socios. Is Socio. Sí. <laughs> Estoy muy emocionada de poder compartir con ustedes. I'm excited to share with you. Y que conozcan un poco del trabajo de nuestro equipo. A little bit about our team and work. En esta ocasión solo nos acompaña una parte del equipo. In this occasion, there are here a part of Kids of Heart of El Salvador team. <laughs> Cada uno de ellos está en diferentes sedes. Each team is working in different places. Y hacen un servicio con mucho amor, esfuerzo y empeño. Serving with much love, commitment and effort. Nuestra mayor motivación para seguir en esta obra our greatest motivation to continue in this wonderful work is ver cómo no, nuestro ministerio afecta positivamente. Is to see how our ministry possibility affects a los participantes y a los niños que se ministran. The participants and children they are ministered. En esta ocasión quiero comentarles el testimonio de Nicole. Let me tell you about Nicole. Nicole es una niña de 12 años. She is a 12 years old girl que aprendió a escuchar la voz de Dios. The learned to listen to God's voice. Y crecer a través de la palabra. And growing in faith to God's word. Nicole pone en práctica lo que aprendió. Nicole puts into practice all that she learned. Enseñándole a crecer en fe también. Teaching a 15 years old friend to grow in faith. A un amiguito que de 15 años que está pasando con el proceso de cáncer. Who is going through a cancer process. Eh, Nicole me comenta. Nicole told me. Que el amiguito de ella aprendió a escuchar la voz de Dios. That his friend has learned to wait in God. A crecer en fe. Because he knows that. Y a saber que al que cree todo le es posible. The one who believes. Es para, every, excuse me. Everything is possible. Es para mí bien importante comentarles eso a ustedes. It's very important for me to tell you. Y lo maravilloso que esta certificación está haciendo. Of what, of what does. Excuse me, of what this wonderful certification is doing. En la comunidad cristiana de El Salvador. And how it affects positively to a big part of El Salvador Christian community. Belén nos um, platicará un poco. Let más. me introduce to Belén that uh, she will uh, talk about a little bit this uh, work. Hello, I'm Belen, and I've been in this team for about three years now. I'm really excited to be here. And also, we're really grateful to God because it has allowed us to go to different locations here in our country. We have been in Zacatecoluca, in Santa Ana, in Evangelical University, in La Cima, in the Limbs Church, that is one of, well, that is the largest church in our country. So it's a great blessing for us to have been able to be there. And last year, sadly, because of COVID, we only had one location in Santa Ana, but because God is good and has helped us, we graduated 15 people last year, even though it was a difficult time for us because of COVID. But now in 2022, we had two locations, one in an evangelical university, and the other one in Santa Ana. And from each location, we graduated 12 people. 
Now, we also wanted to mention that we have around 10 people of our staff in every location because we really want to connect with the people, with the participants, and help them also to show them Jesus' love so they show that love to the children. And in 2023, we really want to have four locations, one in Evangelical University and the other one in Santa Ana, Opico, and World Vision, that is a key place to help leaders really connect with children and help them have that relationship with Jesus. Now we want to let Memo talk about more. Memo, before you get started, I just want to invite the viewers to use that Q&A button at the bottom. Uh, Memo's our last uh, presenter, but there will be time for, for questions afterwards. So while he speaks, if you'd like to type some in the box using the Q&A, we can do that. And, and I just, I want to, help Belin introduce Memo because he's my buddy who uh, was my tour guide last time I was around. He knows he knows the country so well. He'll take you anywhere in El Salvador. So. Hi there. Good night. So, I am Memo, uh, as you know. So I want to I want to share maybe maybe at first I want to tell you that I've been part of this amazing team uh, since 2014. So I want to tell you a little bit about the alliance that we have with the Evangelical University here in El Salvador with Kids at Heart. And this has been a great blessing because it's a strategic place for us, for different churches of different denominations uh, to participate in the Kids at Heart programs, uh, managing to change the lives of the children uh, of our churches by achieving a teaching uh, focus on them and that they can love God with all that they are. That's why these people, the participants, uh, take this message to their churches in different places and churches for different denominations outside of San Salvador. And they want us to go there and teach them how to get children to love Jesus and have a personal relationship with him. Each of those trainings that as a Kids at the Heart team, uh, we carry out of uh, in both uh, different expenses, transport like transportation expenses uh, to move out of San Salvador, as well in the preparation of the material for, for each presenter and also for the participants. And visual aids, also the bookmarks, and also brochures, and snacks for our uh, short breaks and also for the launches for all the Kids at Heart members and participants. Expenses that on many occasions uh, churches do not have the possibility uh, to cover, and we as a Kids at Heart members in El Salvador uh, cannot cover either. So this is our desire, and it's to continue sharing each of these tools with joy and also with love, teaching that we have personally been able to put into practice, and we can testify that what we have learned in Kids at Heart is a success guided by God for our ministries, but also especially for our children so that they can grow and they can nurture uh, us the great children that they are. Thank you. Thank you, Memo and team. Excellent job. We have a, a several questions. Let me uh, ask you these. When students take the Kids at Heart courses at the university, are they allowed to teach those spiritual concepts in the public classrooms? Can you take those to your public schools and, and teach them? Not necessarily, not really. We are not allowed to, uh, publicly speaking, public uh, in public uh, schools, we're not allowed to talk about Bible per se. But um, in, at the Evangelical University, of course, there's some students coming from psychology major, or there's some pastoral also major that come to kids at heart training. And also a, the university has allowed uh, some of them to take those uh, trainings, um, those modules, and they accepted those modules as part of the, of the, of the education, uh, mm, like excellent. expanded education, yes. Okay, and another question, um, what, are the most important things? What are the exciting things you're seeing change in kids' lives 
uh, when, so I know many of you train adults and teach the children, how is it impacting the children? And Carolina, do share with us the, the statistics about your inmates in the country. The inmates, oh my goodness, I really don't, um, los encarcelados, I really don't have the inmates, it's the people in jail, right? Right, you had told us at one time the oh. statistics. Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah, a long time ago, yes. There's like 54.7, if I recall correctly, that are youngsters in jail that come from evangelical uh, homes that are in jails. The, the rest uh, are from Catholic, church, uh, from Catholic homes and also the very small part, non, nothing, nor Catholic nor evangelical. But unfortunately, 54.7% of the youngsters in jails come from evangelical homes. That means that they have heard about God but they, they have not known God as their own savior, their father. So it's very sad. Thankfully, uh, I, I think that God is a hard is doing something because this, this number has decreased in the past few years. So um, uh, Pastor Vega, who's the pastor of the largest church here, Lean, as Belen said, he's, he's doing all these statistics year by year. And he says that, um, this, this number is decreasing. It has decreased from five years ago. So um, thank, thank God it's decreasing. Okay, and we do need to wrap up, but, but we would love to know how we can pray for all of you. Yes, I can pray for you. Now, there's a question. Do you want to say something that you can pray? Do you want to pray for us? Do you want a petition? Yes, that really se nos abran más puertas, the doors will open much more, eh, y también necesitamos uh, que Dios bendiga a las personas financieramente. That may God bless uh, the people that donate more financially para nosotros poder desplazarnos a muchos lugares que necesitan de la certificación. Because we need to move to other uh, uh, corners of El Salvador that have not been impacted by this training. So we need more um, donations so that God may bless all these people that are really blessing and uh, with donations and prayers. It's a great way to partner with this in ever-growing team that is reaching multiple countries. Uh, thank you so much, Latin America, kids at heart. Let's, let's pray. Um, Father God, thank you for uh, the incredible things that you are doing through these brothers and sisters and the many, many others that represent you so well in uh, Latin America. We thank you uh, for this time that we could just get a glimpse into their lives. We thank you for uh, their love for you and for your children. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Thank you on online. Good to good to see you. Adiós, all. amigos. Adiós. Bye. Adiós. Adiós.